All right, so Moms Across America responded to my video talking about glyphosate and bonza pasta. You know, the thing they've been fear-mongering about for the past few months or so. So let's take a look at their response. Let's see what they had to say. Before we analyze the information, we're also going to consider the source because they also commissioned the testing. And the source, friends, is Moms Across America. Hi, Andy. Yes, let's consider the source of all of the information that we receive. We would love to know the source of your information that you have received about glyphosate safety because our hundreds of studies show that glyphosate is harmful. You can find them on MomsAcrossAmerica.org under data, and it just so happens that the majority of them are independent studies that are not funded by the industry. Also, Moms Across America is a nonprofit that we are the ones that commissioned the testing, and it's not a secret. And we are a national coalition of unstoppable moms that care about our children and our loved ones and our communities not eating high levels of glyphosate or pesticides. So I will go ahead and respond for Andy here since this was my video and I did very clearly show show the source that I was talking about when we were talking about the actual data regarding safety levels of glyphosate in foods. So I already shared this in that last video and talked about it quite a bit in that video as well, but this is EFSA or the European Food Safety Authority recent risk assessment and peer review of glyphosate. And as I also explained in that last video, it is the most comprehensive and transparent assessment of a pesticide that EFSA and the EU member states have ever carried out, taking into account thousands of studies related to human and animal health and the environment and involving dozens of scientists from EFSA and national authorities across Europe. So they, the actual experts, scientists that understand this area of study, understand how to evaluate these studies, they assessed thousands of studies regarding glyphosate. And after this very thorough risk assessment, they decided to renew their approval of glyphosate for another 10 years. Now, I'm sure this group of moms does care about their community, their kids, their health, and they are concerned about what is in their food. That is totally valid. However, this is not a group of people that have expertise in this area or even have expertise evaluating scientific studies like scientists in EFSA do, as well as scientists in regulatory agencies across the world. And that lack of understanding of how to properly evaluate all of the evidence and how to assess it is very apparent when they try to talk about it. I'll let Dr. Ids take this one because he did talk about it in one of his recent videos as well. Not only that, but they claim they read a lot of science. Okay, but if you can't comprehend that science, then what good is reading it? For example, on their website, they say that 21% of samples were positive for glyphosate at levels higher than 10 parts per billion, which they claim is the EU default threshold for acceptable pesticide residues. Now, this makes the number 2,900 sound super scary, right? Well, that's a complete lie and once again demonstrates their inability to comprehend what it is they're reading. From the official EU Commission regulation, acceptable residual levels for glyphosate on chickpeas, which is what bonza pasta is made of, does say 10 here. But guys, what's the unit? 10 of what? The unit is milligrams per kilogram, not parts per billion. One milligram per kilogram is equal to one part per million. So when you convert 10 milligrams per kilogram to parts per billion, you get 10,000, not 10 parts per billion. Only off by, you know, a factor of a thousand. Actually, what their article should have stated was none of the samples they tested exceeded any safety limit set by the EU. So if that's not fear mongering something that is safe, I have no idea what is. In addition to that whole mess, they actually retested the pasta after cooking because those were the numbers dry before cooking. So they actually retested it in the form that you would actually consume it in because that makes more sense, right? Glyphosate is water soluble, so it is going to be reduced when it is cooked. This is what they found. Levels went from over 2,000 parts per billion down to 161 parts per billion. Wow, so only 161 parts per billion in the form that you would actually consume it in when you were claiming 2,800 parts per billion originally. That's 17 times lower than what you originally claimed. But of course, that wouldn't have got the same scary headlines that you got when you were claiming it was 2,800 parts per billion, which I already explained in that last video was already a safe level. But 161 parts per billion, that definitely wouldn't have got those same headlines and that same attention. Bonza Pastel also submitted a sample for independent testing from the same lot that they sent in as well. This was a cooked sample and they found 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of glyphosate, which is 0.1 parts per million or 100 parts per billion. So again, much lower than that initial 2,800 parts per billion that garnered so many scary headlines and ultimately generated funding for their nonprofit. All right, let's move on. This is a three-part series. FSA and EU member states carried out a risk assessment and peer review thereof for the active substance glyphosate. It is the most comprehensive and transparent assessment of a pesticide that FSA and the EU member states have ever carried out. Let's talk about comprehensive, shall we? Okay, so what we know, going back a little ways there, exclude science, babe, is that Charles Benbrook assessed all of the studies that the International Agency for Research on Cancer used when they determined that glyphosate is a probable human carcinogen and a definite animal carcinogen back in 2015. And guess what? The EPA did not look at. They completely ignored, meaning they cherry-picked the studies and they ignored 67 of the studies that the IARC looked at, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, that determined that glyphosate is carcinogenic. Okay, so that's not comprehensive. That's not including independent studies. And so we would assert that EFSA did the same thing. All oh, right, cherry picking, like the handful of studies that you cherry pick to put on your website. Cherry picking a handful of studies and citing them on a website and then saying a random group of people are disagreeing with the conclusions of regulatory agencies around the world does not actually refute that data and those conclusions. 
All right, so she's confusing dietary exposure here with occupational exposure, which is what IARC was assessing in their hazard assessment. Remember that they don't assess risk, they assess hazard. I have several videos about this if you want to learn more. Now let's remember that the entire argument here is that this group of moms is more qualified to assess the body of data and these studies than regulatory agencies across the world, yet they are confusing occupational exposure with dietary exposure. Not only that, but if we look at the largest human study ever conducted on this, the Agricultural Health Study, which included over 54,000 pesticide applicators, it showed that no association was apparent between glyphosate and any solid tumors or lymphoid malignancies overall, including NHL and its subtypes. And what was that about funding again? Oh right, the accusation is that all these studies are funded by the pesticide manufacturers. And in reality, this largest human study was supported by the Intramural Research Program of the National Institutes of Health and the National Cancer Institute. So that claim that all of the thousands of studies that regulatory agencies around the world are assessing in these risk assessments are being done by the pesticide manufacturers is just completely false. This aligns with Health Canada's statement that they released in 2019 after a thorough scientific review stating that no pesticide regulatory authority in the world currently considers glyphosate to be a cancer risk to humans at the levels at which humans are currently exposed. Again, these statements are coming from scientists around the world that have assessed the thousands of studies on glyphosate and are all coming to similar conclusions. All right, let's continue. In addition, they derived an acceptable daily intake for glyphosate at 0.5 milligrams per kilogram body weight per day. Okay, let's talk levels. Let's be clear. The levels are only yay high that you're talking about in Europe and in the United States because the industry has told them they need to be that high. It is documented that Monsanto has sent emails and memos to the EPA, to all different types of governments saying, hey, you need to raise your allowable levels and maximum residue levels of glyphosate on your crops because the farmers are spraying it more. So all this shows is that she didn't even read through EFSA's risk assessment to see how ADI is determined. It's just something, something, Monsanto, something, something, right? It's all just a conspiracy theory. I mean, that is a lot easier to assert than actually reading through the data and reading through the risk assessment. I get that, but it is so intellectually lazy. Again, this just shows that this group of moms doesn't even properly evaluate or read through a risk assessment that EFSA just did to see how something like the ADI is determined. Yet they're saying that they're more qualified than these regulatory agencies and all these scientists around the world to assess and evaluate the data. It's just wild. So again, this risk assessment took thousands of studies into account to determine an ADI, and I'm going through here all of the relevant information and studies that you can go ahead and read in this risk assessment that allowed them to come to their conclusion on what the acceptable daily intake should be. Similarly, again, regulatory agencies around the world have assessed the thousands of studies and come to similar conclusions. If you are saying that Monsanto or Bayer has somehow influence all of these regulatory agencies around the world to come to a specific conclusion. All you have is a global conspiracy theory at this point. So after reviewing all of that data, they found that the acceptable daily intake is 0.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. So these ADIs are typically set based on the NOAEL, which is the no observable adverse effects level and a safety factor of 10 to 1000 is typically built into these numbers to determine that ADI. So they are extremely conservatively set as well. And in this case, a uncertainty factor of 100 was applied. In the caption, I'll detail all the types of tests that are required in order to conduct a risk assessment like this and to come up with an ADI or a reference dose. So let's go back to their cooked pasta number that they got, 161 parts per billion, and use EFSA's extremely conservatively set ADI of 0.5 milligrams per kilograms of body weight. A 70 kilogram human could consume almost 500 pounds of this pasta per day before reaching that conservatively set level. Well, it turns out that I gave them way too much credit in that last video, and even though that amount was safe, this number is much lower. This data just continues to reinforce how our food supply is extremely safe from a glyphosate residue perspective. But of course, if that was their message, they wouldn't be able to instill fear in consumers and get them to donate money to their organization. Not to mention the toxin shielding supplements that they sell on their website as well. Her income is directly tied to scaring consumers about this. What's interesting is that I often get comments that I'm somehow financially benefiting from saying that this is safe when that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm not getting paid by anybody to say this. I'm simply just communicating the available evidence. And in fact, some platforms that I post my videos on don't even monetize content anymore. So I'm literally not getting paid anything on some platforms and even the ones that I can monetize on is very little. If there was evidence showing these levels were unsafe, I would communicate that data as well. But 
the evidence simply just doesn't show that. The overwhelming evidence shows that this is safe. I do also want to note that you can both not like Monsanto slash Bayer as a company and also take an unbiased approach to evaluating the data and understanding that the data shows overwhelmingly that these levels are safe. Because again, if they were taking an unbiased approach to evaluating the evidence and actually understanding how to evaluate the body of evidence, they would come to the conclusion that the levels they found are safe and they wouldn't be able to instill fear in consumers in order to get them to donate to their organization. It's really just how to be a charlatan 101. Create the problem, sell the solution. But I'm the shill, right?